Our breaking news this morning is that Ofgem, the energy regulator, has this morning announced changes to the energy price cap which will come into effect from the 1st of April. Yeah, it was confirmed a drop of just over 12%, which means typical households will see a reduction of £238 a year, bringing that cap to £1,690 a year. Uh, really pleased to say that Martin is here with us this morning. Morning to you, Martin. Uh, so the first thing everybody will be Good thinking morning. this morning is what sort of impact is this going to have on households? Well, the first thing is forget that £230 a year figure and that £1,690 a year figure because it's completely meaningless and doesn't affect anybody. It's just a made-up figure based on typical usage. Uh, also, it, because it's projected for a year, um, the, the price cap only lasts three months. So let's, let's go back to basics. The amount you pay for gas and electricity will be dropping by an average, and it depends by region and how much you use, 12.3% on the 1st of April. What does that mean in practice? For every £100 for energy you're paying at the moment on the same usage, you will pay £87.70 from the 1st of April. And we're expecting it to drop again on the 1st of July. But prices are now still nearly double the cheapest prices we had before the price cap. But big picture, it is better news. Good news, I probably can't go as far as. From the 1st of April, what you pay for the same amount of energy will be cheaper. OK, mm. so... What about people who undoubtedly be watching thinking about prepay meters? Can you give us any advice on what it might well, mean for people with prepay this, meters? This is the big change hidden under the figures. So sorry about that. For the first time, prepayment will probably, properly be the cheapest way to pay. They have equalised the standing charges on prepayment and direct debit and unit rates of prepayment and cheaper. So from the 1st of April, if you are on the price cap, which the vast majority of homes in England, Scotland and Wales are on, basically anyone who isn't on a fix or on an EV or special tariff, then prepayment will be typically 3% cheaper than paying by direct debit. Now, I've been lobbying about prepayment costs for years. Most of the most vulnerable in the country are on prepayment. So the fact prepayment is now going to be cheaper is absolutely gobsmacking. Technically, it is slightly cheaper at the moment, but that's because of a government subsidy. From April, it will be actually cheaper because of real pricing. So many people will be thinking, well, I may as well shift to prepayment then. I'd urge some caution on that. I'm talking about the cost of prepayment on the price cap. If and when market competition comes back, most of the cheapest deals are for direct debit. So I suspect the pattern we're going to have in the future is if you're a switcher who moves tariff, you should be on direct debit because that's where the cheapest deals come and they, you will make the bigger savings. If you're not going to switch, perversely, from what we've been saying for the past 10 to 15 years, prepayment meters are now going to be the cheapest route for you. Uh, it's quite staggering. I don't think people have pulled that out of these these changes. No, that's what that's what you're so brilliant at. Yeah, absolutely. So, are there any particular tariffs or places to switch that would well, be favourable? Well, I think before we do that, issue? I think we should look at. I think we should look at standing charges first because this drives everybody mad. I'm afraid to say, even though energy prices are going down, standing charges are going up again. That's the daily charge you pay, the poll tax, effectively, you pay for having a gas and electricity meter. Currently, it's £303 a year. From the 1st of April, it'll be running at a pro rata equivalent of £334 a year on direct debit. And you pay that whether you use any energy or not. Now, I've long campaigned that we need to cut standing charges. It's a moral hazard. It's a poll tax. The regulator does have a consultation out on it. They're saying hopefully it'll come within the next six weeks or so. I think we need to get a move on on this because it's absolutely ridiculous. Many elderly people who only use their gas in the winter are paying, you know, huge amounts in the mm. summer just for having mm. a gas meter. It doesn't work. One other big change that I'll bring to you that's digging in here. I'm hoping that the 1st of April, we will see market competition come back. Switches tariffs start to, to be reintroduced. The reason for that, Ofgem, the regulator, has two big blocks on that. The first of this thing called the market stabilisation charge. What it introduced in the crisis, quite staggeringly, is if you switch to a new company that was offering cheaper deals because wholesale rates have dropped, it had to substantially compensate your old company. And that's one of the reasons we haven't seen switches tariffs. Now, I, I lost my rag in a meeting with Ofgem about that. I used some very inappropriate language, which I later apologised for, because I just thought when I was told that we don't want the harmful effects of cheaper prices, I, I, I lost it a bit. 
They're getting rid of that on the 1st of April, and that should start to kickstart competition coming back on the 1st of April. There is another thing they've got, which is effectively, uh, they, they have a rule at the moment that says you must offer all new customers the same deal as the existing customers. Normally, I wouldn't object to that. I think they should get rid of that now as well to try and make competition work better. But they haven't done that one. But still, it, the market, this is a big change this 1st of April. It's not just the prices. Prepay's cheaper. Competition's coming back. Um, and, and the prices are going down. There are a lot of tariffs out there. If you've got time, I can talk you through them. Although I have a little anecdote about Ben I want to say too. Well, we don't quite have time, but I know that people will be able to get all that detail you want, won't they, from those tariffs particularly, Martin? I, I, I put everything out on social ben media. Martin, but... it's your last touch on. All right, I put everything is on social media and I'll be working on this through the day. So listen, Ben, I'm going to see you in the new place. So it's, it's not that big a change for me. But I just wanted to give a, a little bit of insight to Ben for everyone. Ben and I play golf together occasionally, and I go there scruffy and sort of bent <laughs> back and try and hit the ball hard. And when you play golf with Ben, first of all, he wears quite tight tops, and he stands <laughs> on the golf tee, and he has this... He has this concave bent back with these rippling shoulder <laughs> muscles that sort of sit there, his buttocks, pert buttocks, <laughs> pressed out as he swings <laughs> on the club. And uh, I'm never quite sure when we're playing golf and I'm watching him hitting the ball, whether I'm supposed to be intimidated or amorous in the way that he stands there and does it. it. I mean, it's like a Greek god you're sitting there with, and he swings back. I mean, he doesn't hit the ball that well, but it, it's a thing of beauty. I just want everyone to have that picture of Ben in their mind before oh, he goes. Everything, everything. Oh, look at that. Everything up till I hit the ball is perfect, and then when I hit the ball and it dribbles along the floor, it all falls apart. Martin, thank you. I, I, yeah, well, we'll see you next door. Thank you for all those brilliant games of golf and the time that we spent together. You're a brilliant, brilliant bloke, not least because of what you do professionally but as a friend as well, and I value that enormously. Wonderful. Wonder Listen, I'm looking forward to uh, more strength to your elbow. I think you're going to be great on the new show, and I shall see you over there. Thanks, Martin. Of course he is. Martin, always good to chat to you about all the other important stuff too. Now, still to come. Did you hear that? See how nice he was about me? He was really You could nice. learn a thing or two from him. What, being nice to yeah. you? Yeah. I know, but it's a bit late now. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a few minutes left.